What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. As you guys are well aware by now, Andor is now live on Disney Plus and they've released the first three episodes and some of the feedback so far, I, I noticed Corellian Outpost posted some information stating that uh, a lot of the early reviews are very solid and the first two episodes are a little slow, but the third episode was the payoff. Disney clearly listened to the reviews and they released the first three episodes on Wednesday the 21st. I'm making this video ahead of time, but by the time this video releases, you guys hopefully have had a chance to watch Andor. And longtime uh, subscriber Jeff Moore suggested that we take a look at Rogue One related collectibles. I've got everything from vintage collection to movie posters uh, to trading cards, all kinds of interesting stuff, including some oddball items at the end of the video. And I've got a couple of channel housekeeping notes. The first is I have the winner for the Bosk bootleg that was so kindly donated to the channel by Patreon supporter Matthew K. And the winner of that bootleg was David Steffens. Uh, David, I believe you're over in the UK. Can you please email me at actionfiguregrader at gmail.com uh, so I can get your mailing address and then I'll be happy to ship off to you that Oratet Russian bootleg Bosk in the hot pink flight suit. So I hope you enjoy that, but uh, I'll give you about a week or so, and then we'll draw another winner if I don't hear from you. Uh, also, I've got a new Patreon supporter, and that is Blake Munger. Blake, thank you so much for becoming a Patreon supporter. I really appreciate the channel support. It means a lot. All of my Patreon supporters get my videos 24 hours early. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, it's patreon.com slash action figure greater all right let's dig into some awesome rogue one related collectibles and uh, that movie poster that you see here in the thumbnail is for the new show and it looks fantastic apparently they've gone in a different direction with uh, kind of how they're doing it it's a lot of uh, new characters and it's much more gritty and dark and i did call that i said that the, this has the chance to be uh, the best show in recent release history excluding the mandalorian of course but I, I, you know, I, I went into kind of it expecting it to be better than Obi, you know, the Obi Wan Kenobi series or the Book of Boba Fett, uh, just based on some of the early kind of production stuff that they released for it, and it, it does look pretty fantastic. Uh, the first item I've got is a nice combo deal with the Rogue One Imperial Combat Assault Tank, as well as both the Assault Tank Driver as well as the Commander, and we all know how expensive these have gotten just based on. Uh, recent vintage collection market updates, but this was a nice little lot of, of all three of them and that sold for hundred and seventy two dollars on three bids And that was a pretty good deal really uh, to get all three of those for that price because I've got some more data points here in a second That'll show you just how expensive that Imperial assault tank commander has gotten but uh, Before we get to that. I've got the rogue one Imperial death trooper uh, this is uncirculated 9.0 on the modern scale with AFA and this seller had Five available, four of them have sold for $130 plus $15 shipping. He's still got one available for those of you still looking out there, but uh, that's a beautiful card back. I think, I can't remember if I sold this one or not. I think I might still have it. I might have sold it. I can't remember. I can't keep them all, so, you know, I think I might have sold that one. So, uh, but it's a beautiful card back and really nice. And I also like it because it's got the multi-language name pill. Uh, these were distributed by Kenner Canada or Hasbro Canada, excuse me for the US, South American market, and Canadian market. So it's got the French language on there, but a, just an absolutely gorgeous card back. Um, as I talked about just a second ago, the Imperial Assault Tank Commander has gotten very, very pricey. And normally it's been selling anywhere from 65 to $85 minimum uh, mint on card. This one though, sold for a big, big number, and it did look really nice and clean. There was just maybe a little bit of wear around that hang tab. That could have been fact, you know, a factory production issue just based on how it looks. But uh, here is the Imperial Assault Tank Commander. Again, it's got the multi-language name pill because it was distributed by Hasbro Canada. But uh, pretty epic card art there. Uh, that one sold for $158 and change plus another $10 shipping. So that's a that's a big number. That's almost double what where this one has been selling. But again, admittedly, it did look very, very clean in the photos. And this is a testament to, if you're an eBay seller, include lots of photos. And uh, you know the, the buyers that are willing to pay up for a, a, a near mint plus example will do that. But how gorgeous is that figure, by the way? I, I love the paint apps on it. Obviously the card art is fantastic. And 
you know, having the multi-language name pill too, just, it really sets it off, but it's, it's a beautiful item, but that's one of the higher data points for that Imperial Assault Tank Commander. Uh, here's another interesting lot I thought I'd throw in for this video, and that is a lot of VC-140, the Rogue One Stormtrooper. It's kind of one of the definitive figures in the line, and uh, there was 15 of them that were sold all together, and they sold for $330. So that's a pretty big number, but, you know, again, either someone is an army builder, which does happen for the vintage collection, or they're going to sell them off individually, but... Uh, one of the best figure molds from uh, recent times, and uh, that's pretty crazy to see 15 of them all together there. So $330 again took that home, plus another $20 shipping. So let's call that $350. Uh, next up, let's dig into some comics. Um, I, I want to talk about Ro Rogue One Adaptation Issue Number 1. Obviously, this is the first appearance of Cassian Andor, K2SO, Jin Erso, Saul Guerrera in comics. And as we know, Saul Guerrera is coming back to the Andor show. I believe this is also the first appearance of director Krennic. Uh, I can't remember if it might be his first cameo and then uh, his first full is in issue two, but I, I can't remember. It might be the first full appearance as well uh, in issue number one. But this is a, the standard cover A. This is one I've got in my collection, and the price has really come down a little bit. Now's a good time to get it. And I don't know if, you know, it used to be like when a new show was getting ready to come out and the first trailer dropped, that was always kind of when to sell a comic. But I think, you know, the, the comic book market has really taken a dip. The economic environment is obviously bad right now. And the entire comic book market, it doesn't seem to matter what's getting released, what new trailers, anything at all. Comic book prices just in general are flat or down. And uh, this one sold for $143.50 plus $15 shipping in an auction on September 18th. So that's a really nice recent data point for those of you still looking for this book. Again, this is the standard cover A, but I thought we'd go through some of the other very desirable covers. And I, I thought I'd show you this one first before I show you a combination from just a month ago. And it shows you how far down the comic book market has fallen just in the last couple of months. But... This is the movie variant cover, and I believe this is the 1 in 25 ratio variant cover. And it's very tough to get this one in a 9.8. There's not many of them available. It's a really beautiful cover, though. Uh, you can see kind of the silhouette with some of the different uh, Rebel uh, vehicles. And then it's got the, all the main characters, again, kind of presented there, along with the Death Star in the background. But what makes this one difficult to get a 9.8 is because of all the black at the bottom portion of the cover and it shows every sp single spine tick and, and I've, you know I've heard that also that it's not produced in very big numbers obviously since it's the one in 25 I believe ratio variant so for every 25 of this standard cover a only one of these was produced and of those because of that black cover not many of those hit the 9.8 grade this one sold on September 18th for $250 plus shipping uh, only one bid on that one now I want to take you back to this look look at this uh, auction from just about a month and a half earlier. This included the 1 in 10 ratio variant cover, which is actually probably even tougher to get in a 9.8 because of how dark it is, plus the movie variant cover that we just covered. Uh, but this sold on August 8th. These two sold for $810 on August 8th. Now, the 1 in 10 ratio variant cover can probably be had for $150 to $175 right now. We just covered that this one just sold for $250. So let's call that about $400. You can get these separately right now. But this batch of two sold on August 8th for $810. So we're talking, in the last six weeks or so, we're talking about, about a 50% drop in market prices just for Rogue One adaptation number one for the incentive covers, the 1 in 10 and the 1 in 25. So that's a pretty incredible price drop, given that we're just getting into the new Andor show. And it's a testament to how far the comic book market has fallen. So uh, just some data points there, but this is an old data point. So th this is not what to base your, your bids off of. But I wanted to just show that because it, it's really important to see how far comic book prices has dropped. And, has, and especially Star Wars comics, because we've been in a dead period here. Now, if the Andor show is accepted and is kind of, reviewed nicely and fans really like it um, I, I think that you'll see prices kind of spike back up again for rogue one adaptation number one and maybe i'm wrong maybe we don't get to these kind of prices that we see here from august 8th but uh, maybe we'll bounce off of some of these lows from september 18th for the one in 25 and then this one also sold on september 18th and this is just the cover a but these are the two data points 
to really follow here uh, versus what happens after the Andor show releases. But man, what a massive drop in prices. The other one that's really rare is the Walmart variant. This is a very, very rare book. And this one was only a, a CGC 9.6, but that sold for $750. So very tough to get this one in a 9.8. I believe there's less than 10, maybe even less than that in a 9.8 rate. So, uh, you know, if you're willing to pony up for a very, very rare uh, cover, uh, this is the one to get because these were sold in kind of Walmart three packs. And so they naturally got beat up really badly. They were probably also not produced very heavily, but uh, this Walmart edition, uh, you know, I have to admit this cover is pretty fantastic. It's got this, the Battle of Scarif at the bottom there, uh, along with all the main protagonists again uh, in a different kind of cover format. But wow, $750 is a big, big number for a CGC 9.6 grade comic. Uh, I've got one other kind of interesting item. This is the Rogue One Electronic Walking AT-AT Imperial Walker. And, you know, obviously we remember the kind of weaker version of the AT-AT Walker that was in the Battle of Scarif. It, did, it wasn't nearly as heavily armed and kind of fell down a lot easier during that Battle of Scarif. But what an incredible scene that was. And this is just the five POA figures, but this included a droid, Jyn Erso, as well as a, uh, it looks like the... Imperial driver, the Imperial uh, AT ACT -T, -A T driver, but uh, uh, that's an it's an interesting item. That one did so sell at auction on September eighteenth. Two hundred and ninety dollars took that home. That was mint and sealed box. Forty four bids plus another forty dollars shipping. So let's call it about three hundred and thirty dollars took home that sealed five POA Rogue One packaged uh, AT AT Walker. I've got a few data points for Hot Toys. I don't know anything about Hot Toys. I don't collect hot toys, but some of the hot toys prices were pretty interesting, and some of these data points are older, just to warn you. Uh, this one sold on July 31st. This is Chirrut Imwe. Uh, what an awesome character. I love Chirrut Imwe. Uh, that one sold for $385 plus $15 shipping on 30 bids. Uh, here was another one that sold on August 6th. This was the Assault Tank Commander. Uh, that one sold for $180 on 7 bids. And then one final one is the Shore Trooper or the Scarif Storm Trooper. Uh, that one sold for $176.50 plus $16 shipping. That one's a more recent data point. That just sold on September 18th. Um, here, we're going to start digging into maybe some other interesting items that are kind of non-action figure related. And uh, this one is very interesting. This is a Rogue One movie poster. They only produced 100 of these. And it's a beautiful poster, admittedly. I don't collect posters because I just don't have the room to display them, but uh, what an awesome looking poster. And uh, that one, again, was only, it's one of 100 that were made by Paul Mann, and it was listed for $850. The final sales price uh, that I found on 130point.com was $820. So clearly, you know, there, there are some movie poster collectors out there that are willing to pay big boy money for these, and uh, they're very, very exclusive with very low print runs. I also have some trading cards, PSA trading cards for some of the various Rogue One characters. This is Cassian Andor from the 2020 Star Wars Living Set. This was graded Gem Mint PSA 10. That one sold for $180. That's a pretty big data point. And a lot of it's just tied to the population report for some of these PSA cards. There's not many of them available for some of them, and, and the price commands that. You can get some of them, some of the Living Set uh, card backs for you know that are at PSA tens for less than you know seventy five bucks. Some some of them even less than that. But Cassian Andor anyway sold for big money. That one sold for one hundred and eighty dollars plus five forty shipping. Uh, here was a twenty sixteen Top Star Wars Jin Urso Rogue One card, and uh, that's a beautiful card. Here's the back of it, and that one sold for one hundred and ninety nine ninety five PSA ten Gem Mint. Uh, here was an, another really good one. This was uh, from that same set, but this was autographed by Forrest Whitaker, who obviously portrayed Saul Guerrera. Uh, the autograph got a 10 grade. Uh, the card itself got a 9 grade. And PSA can do a number of different ways. If you have an autograph card, you can just send it in for authentication without a grade at all. You can send it in to have the autograph authenticated and graded in terms of the quality of the autograph, how it's centered, if there's got any smudges, things like that. Uh, or you can also send it in for the autograph grading plus the card grading. And in this case, whoever submitted this one submitted it for the card to be graded as well as the autograph to be authenticated and the, for the autograph to be graded. So it's got two scores there. The card got a 9 and the autograph got a 10. Pretty great card back, though, and it's a, a nice way to collect some of these autographs for 
uh, some of the movie uh, actors. This one sold for $124.50 on August 23rd, 23 bids plus $6 shipping. Now we're going to dig into some oddball items that I thought were pretty surprising. Uh, this is a Columbia Star Wars jacket that is kind of modeled after Rogue One Cassian Andor's outfit. And if you remember, he wore a jacket in several scenes that was very kind of like this. And, you know, Columbia does a number of jackets like this. They have like a Hoth jacket that goes for very expensive. They're, they're produced in very limited numbers. And, um, you know, you can see here on the inside of the tag there, it's got the Rogue One label. Uh, I know that they have an Empire Strikes Back Hoth jacket that goes for big money. This one sold for $875 plus $15 shipping. So uh, pretty pretty crazy how expensive some of these jackets go for. But they're, they're almost like collector's items, and a lot of people collect them and don't even wear them. But for $875, that's a lot of money. Uh, here's a Scarif Storm, uh, Shore Trooper helmet. Um, I, I know nothing about these helmets, but it's, it's, it looks very movie accurate with lots of weathering. Uh, pretty cool looking helmet there. That one sold for $625. Big boy money. Uh, here was a pop, a Funko pop that was signed by uh, Diego Luna, who obviously is the actor that was in Rogue One as well as in the new Andor series. So this is a Target exclusive Rogue One pop that was signed by the actor. That one sold for $359. And this one also included the Beckett Certificate of Authenticity. Uh, you can send them in and Beckett will charge you like a $35 fee and they'll, they'll sign off that this is actually a legitimate item uh, or a legitimate signature. And then finally, this was a really cool one. This was a Lego store display for the Rogue One line of Legos and it included all of the different Lego minifigures labeled uh, as to what character they are along with the U-Wing as you can see there. And it's kind of in a big plexiglass acrylic display. It's got like a press here to ha hear some sounds, things like that. Uh, so these store displays are pretty rare, pretty tough to get them outside of, you know, being if you happen to work for the store and happen to take it home with you. But uh, this one sold on eBay for $1,750 plus another $200 shipping. So let's call that almost $2,000 for a Lego store display related to the Rogue One line of collectibles. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of a fun video idea. Thank you, Jeff Moore, to, uh, for, for submitting that idea for a video. I hope you enjoy the new Andor show, and thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon.